We learned in the last video that obesity has a genetic origin that's well established and that we believe that it is way more of a polygenic uh, disease compared to one that's potentially monogenic where one gene is associated with it. In obesity we believe that the cumulative effect of changes in a variety, and we're going to see just how many genes, comes together to increase risk of obesity in a way that we don't fully understand yet, but that is still an, um, an area of investigation. So what's really kind of blown the lid off of this concept and really helped us learn a lot more is this newer uh, approach called genome-wide uh, association studies. And the biggest genome-wide association study associated specifically with obesity is something called the GIANT Consortium, giant standing for, giant standing for Genetic Investigation of Anthropometric Traits. Quite the mouthful. <laughs> so basically what they did in this study is, and we couldn't have really done this before, is it was all this genome data. After all the genome mapping that's occurred around the world and all this genetic data that we now have access to, uh, researchers have a pool that we can start looking at running different data analyses on and figuring out kind of what shows up and that's really what they did but they call it hypothesis free analysis of genome variation so what they were really trying to find out is okay here are the genomes of people with obesity here are the genomes of people that don't have obesity okay by bmi that was rated and they looked at okay these people with obesity what is different about their genomes, what SNPs, what single nucleotide polymorphisms are more common in the genomes of people with obesity compared to the genomes of people without obesity. So this study has been going on for more than 10 years and we're continuing to collect data from it. And this really, like the big thing that kind of kicked off this area of research was uh, that FTO gene that we talked about in the last module. Okay, so this slide is really for interest, but it shows you kind of the evolution of this giant study. And like I said, it's still going on. But in 2009, uh, they found six novel uh, loci in a smaller group of individuals with obesity. But they keep running analyses on different genomic data, and more of these novel loci keep showing up. Okay, and I want you to watch this video that's going to be posted. Um, on canvas under this video to give you a bit of a better overview of this study and, and she explains it really well what they did and uh, why the findings are so interesting okay so this slide don't memorize everything on it but it really shows each of these bars each of these little bars here okay and I'm not doing a good job of showing bars but each of these bars shows a different genetic uh, locus where we have seen single nucleotide polymorphisms that are um, associated with those people that have obesity. And as far as the effect size, they all have fairly small effect size on increasing risk of obesity on their own, with FTO having kind of the largest effect size. But if a person has a bunch of these and a bunch of mixed up, um, changes in their in their genomes especially in areas that are associated with changes in BMI it's no surprising that some people are at a higher risk of obesity than others it doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna get it but a common phrase we like to use in kind of this nature versus nurture discussion is um, you know genetics loads the gun and the environment pulls the trigger and the concept here is that really some individuals are kind of loaded up with pro-obesity genetics. And if they are living in an area with a pro-obesity environment, like North America <laughs> or the world <laughs> right now in general, it's no surprising that those with a pro-obesity genome are more likely to actually develop um, obesity, okay? So we're not going to get into too many specifics on this slide, but in addition to knowing that there are different loci that are where SNPs exist that are more common in individuals with obesity, we also wanted to know kind of where in the genome, which kind of genes tend to be those affected. And it seems that um, it's 
you know, we kind of actually expect it to be around like metabolism associated uh, genes, but the majority of the SNPs that were found, oh, I just crossed that out, were around genes that were associated with um, the, the central nervous system, okay? And those uh, uh, genetic changes that were found, they seemed again to be associated with near genes that were involved in a lot of different neuronal functions. Okay, so there's some sort of neural regulation uh, change that's happening in individuals with obesity that again might increase their propensity for obesity. Okay, so what's really interesting about this data though is like it tells us there's a genetic origin for obesity, but it doesn't paint the whole picture. Like it's like, what do these genes do? Or what are these changes? How do these changes affect the genes and the gene expression? And how does that actually relate to someone having a bigger body size? Okay. And what they found is that like the, the SNPs that they found weren't actually in like coding regions of the gene, which is really interesting. The majority of them were in intronic regions, intergenic regions, or near gene regions. Only one gene variant was actually found in a coding region. So again, <laughs> like we often see, sometimes these studies, you know, they don't give us answers, they give us more questions, okay? Like it says here, the precise functional impact of these individual gene variants is unknown. Okay, could be about the transcriptional regulation of these genes or some sort of conformational changes, occurring some sort of conformational changes in the chromatone structure. Uh, we don't know. Okay, so it's, it's like there's a lot of questions still about how these genetic changes actually lead to obesity. We just know they're associated with obesity. But to me, the most interesting thing about that giant study is that they found that the majority of those obesity-related single nucleotide polymorphisms were found in areas near and around genes that are associated with appetite regulation. And I'm going to be honest with you, when I first learned this, it was a bit like validating. <laughs> as someone who's really struggled with her own body weight and her own appetite regulation. Um, you know, I have an appetite that just never stops, never goes to sleep, and I know other people don't. And it really feels sometimes for me like there's like a monster <laughs> inside <laughs> that wants to keep eating, and I've never really been able to understand it. And this doesn't give us the full picture, because appetite is more complex than that, but it gives an indication that what's happening at the genetic level when it comes to obesity is there's some sort of dysregulated appetite um, issues, okay? Not the only issue, but that's kind of a major driving force with obesity, which we're going to explore more in the appetite unit too, okay? So more evidence to support this, uh, hypothalamic regions and pituitary glands show high levels of those uh, SNP expression. Again, our hypothalamus is our main appetite regulation area. But what's interesting is there was also some of the changes around the hippocampal and uh, limbic system, which we probably know that are linked with behavior, motivation, learning, memory, and emotion. And again, we're gonna learn in the appetite section how much uh, emotion and motivation are linked with certain forms of uh, obesity and certain um, pro-appetite, pro-eating patterns, okay? So, like we said, we don't know what these SNPs are doing. Um, we, we know that the majority of the SNPs are associated with genes that tend to be expressed in neural regions. Uh, especially near genes that are associated with synaptic signaling, synapse, synapse assembly, vesicle formation, neurotransmitter release, and again in those genes associated with, um, with appetite. So what we were talking about really kind of leads us to this quote right here, which actually was um, said <laughs> or written before that giant study came out. So the genetic dissection of monogenic and polygenic forms of obesity delineated as an inherited disorder of central regulation of food intake. This is in line with the fact that food intake related parameters are her heritable and are strongly correlated with BMI. So what's the take home message here? Is that yes, monogenic and polygenic um, origins of obesity exist 
and we believe that the genetic origins of obesity aren't just simply just about appetite, but are mainly about regulation of food intake. And that kind of makes sense because we probably know that a lot of individuals with obesity have a hard time not eating a lot, even if they want to, even if their like prefrontal thinking brain is like, don't eat too much. There might be more like drive associated factors that are linked with genetic changes that an individual has no control over that are kind of overriding the thinking brains saying don't eat but everything else is saying eat for whatever reason okay so this doesn't provide us with a solution for obesity but what it does provide us with is i think a little bit more compassion and understanding for individuals dealing with obesity as to one of the reasons why it is so hard to control food intake uh, for some people compared to other people.